We're doing a 100 hour inspection on this 210. Found quite a few things wrong with it that we would like to share with you guys. The first thing we noticed is that the nose gear unlock actuator had a serious leak in it. It's hard to tell. Uh, there are two O-rings that fit into there into a little recess. It'd be 1B and 1A. Uh, 1A is a backer and 1B is the actual O-ring. The backer was completely gone and that is why it was leaking. So we're gonna have to rebuild this actuator, which you've already started taking apart. This goes in here like that. There's actually a couple of balls and springs that go on this end. Make sure to save those in your parts bag and then always take pictures or record something when you take it apart so it's easier to get back because it's not always this clear in the manual. All right, we've got our rebuilt actuator in place. Hopefully it doesn't leak fluid everywhere. It's really important to clean everything up really good before you run it. Like this residual fluid in that line right there. Go ahead and wipe that off before we run it. That way when you run it, you'll be able to tell if it's leaking or not. There's also two swivel fittings, which we have removed from here. And the swivel fittings go to the brakes. So it's part of the brake system. In this particular aircraft, there is a tube that runs down here and connects to the brakes because these swing up and back. And that's part of the locking process for that swivel fitting. And we'll come back and show you the new ones when we put them on. Um, but an easy way to check and make sure they're leaking is just take them off and put them under water and blow some pressure in the tube. And it's pretty obvious that it's leaking. Right, move your hands. And here is one of the last things we found wrong with the plane. Just a slight crack in the flange of the oil cooler. Now in and of itself, it was not leaking. The issue is you can't always control the spread of the crack. And if it goes through the weld right there that you see, it could continue down the base. And it looks like it's gonna go to that mounting hole, but it could go back and start to leak. You never know. But with a cracked component, critical component like that, we're definitely gonna take it off and replace it. All right, one of the last things we noticed on this nose wheel is that during the inspection, when we were cleaning the bearings, I like to look through the holes. It's hard to see now, but since it's already unbolted, if you look there, you can see a nice shiny crack. Don't even need to use dye pin on it. It's definitely cracked. So crack nose wheel means we're gonna replace it. Whenever you do inspect nose wheels, just kind of be careful. Some of them have casting marks like that one that look like cracks that aren't, but you get used to seeing them. And then you can adjust them. all of the wheel half stud through holes have the same type of crack around them. Let's see if I can get it to show up on camera. And uh, yep, there's that one right there. You can see, and it's starting to run through the wheel and go towards the bearing surface. So it was good to catch it. And get her running as soon as we get the oil cooler back on, which is a fun job on this plane. But since they have the STC to remove the turbos and have them off, it's a lot easier because there's fewer oil lines to hook up. So anyways, that's it for this 100 hour.